Big quarter out of Robinhood. Real uh, record revenues, they were up 40% year over year. Crypto revenue up 232%. Lots going on at this company. Let's welcome in Robinhood co founder and CEO Vlad Tena. Vlad, always great to get some time with you. Hang with me here on, on this one. I recently caught up uh, with Reddit's co founder and CEO, uh, Steve Huffman, and I asked him, it sounded like after his quarter, the platform looked and felt like it's grown up. I'll put the same question to you, just given the gains and the numbers in this quarter. Is Robinhood all grown up now, and investors need to think about your company and your platform a lot differently? Well, thanks for having me, by the way. I think certainly the platform's become more diversified. Uh, we've said for a long time that we don't want to help our customers with their investing activities. We don't want to just do that, but we can help in lots of ways high yield savings, retirement, uh, the new credit card offering. So you're beginning to see uh, the strategy evolving. And over time, you'll continue to see more products from Robinhood with, with the core essence of superior economics and superior user experience. I think the real highlight for me, and we'll dive into a lot of numbers, Vlad, but customers transferred $4 billion in retirement assets to Robinhood, and I know you give uh, rewards or boosters to get some of those assets, but that's a very large number. Why do you think people, outside of those incentives, why do you think they're moving the assets to Robinhood, and, and what are you doing to, I guess, keep those, those numbers like that coming? Yeah, and, and one thing that we mentioned in earnings is it's not just the aggregate level of asset inflows, but also the fact that for the second quarter in a row, we're seeing net positive inflows from all of our major incumbent competitors. So across our incumbent competitors, people are moving more assets into Robinhood than moving out. And I think it's it's a couple of things. When we talk to customers, particularly for our retirement product, they love the user experience and the 3% match that is evergreen for contributions um, is just, among the most compelling offers they've seen. it uh, A lot of them don't have 401ks through employers. The ones that do sometimes don't have employers that match. So having Robinhood provide that service in an individual self-directed retirement product is, is really compelling. So it's those two things I mentioned, superior economics, superior user experience. Do you have an age group? These folks moving retirement assets, is it folks like me over the age of 40 that are, are making these move now? Or do, you, or do you have just retirees saying, I, I don't know what some of these other retirement platforms are doing, but I, I like what Robinhood is offering me? Yeah, uh, I think with this offer, it appeals both to first time investors, millennials and, and Gen Z. And there's a, a long-term trend of each successive generation being interested in retirement and starting to think about it at younger and younger ages. So for example, Gen Z, there was a recent survey that says they start thinking about it when they're 19 years old. And so it's compelling as a first retirement product, but also with the matches, um, it's also very compelling with someone that has a very large pre-existing IRA account at another broker. And we've seen lots of customers who are maybe five years away from retirement age, who uh, the economics of the offer are irresistible to pass up. And maybe they already use Robinhood and they like the user experience for the active trading products or the taxable account. And we've seen uh, lots of transfers which mu with much larger account balances. And I think to us that shows that Robinhood has evolved in feature set and capability far beyond where we started. And now it actually can serve customers who have more complex financial needs. And that was the goal from the very beginning. We wanted to start with something very simple and evolve the feature set and the capability to encompass customers that have varied and more complex needs. We're starting to see that work and uh, we're gonna continue on that journey in the years ahead. No, it's fascinating to see. And then also uh, another good quarter in the in the just the bread and butter that stocks business for for Robinhood. Do you think there's an economic read in there? And I by that I mean, Vlad, people are, are trading more on the platform, perhaps because they don't you know, they're not beating inflation. You know, they're having trouble paying for their everyday needs. Do you think they're now investing in stocks as a way to 
to try to go out there and beat inflation? I think that typically what you see, and we did actually see this, when interest rates go up uh, relative to uh, relative to cash, stocks become less attractive, and you see flows uh, on a macro level away from the equity markets and into uh, bonds as well as high yield instruments like uh, the Robinhood Gold product. Um, but you have countervailing forces to that. You have what's happening in the crypto markets. You have uh, a tremendous amount of innovation uh, concentrated in the U.S. in artificial intelligence. And uh, younger customers who typically have a longer time horizon tend to be more optimistic about technology and they want to be early onto these trends. And so that's balanced out some of the effects that we'd normally see in a higher interest rate environment. On the trading front, um, perhaps you could just detail a little more on this Wells notice um, that Robinhood received uh, on the on the crypto front. A any update there and, and how do you plan to defend the company? Well, uh, we shared some statements uh, on that. I had a, a statement on X a couple of days ago. Um, we have been trying to work with the uh, SEC in good faith to register a special purpose broker dealer to uh, trade crypto assets. Uh, obviously, that process uh, was not reciprocated, and that's unfortunate. We do believe we have the most compliant and safest crypto platform out there for customers. We're, as you probably know, extremely selective about the coins that we offer on the platform. They go through a rigorous vetting process. So it, it appears that uh, the, uh, the SEC is taking a, a hostile posture towards the crypto industry in general in the US. And I think with us, we're eager to defend the company and the industry and our customers. And I do believe over the long run that crypto is going to be an important asset class for U.S. consumers. You've seen jurisdictions outside, you know, in, in the European Union, for example, taking um, a much more proactive route where there is more and more regulatory clarity. So, uh, yeah, we, we want to make sure America is not left behind here. We should be at the forefront of innovation across all new technologies. And I think it's incumbent on us to lead that and make sure that the conditions in, in the U.S. remain favorable to technology and innovation. Do you ever think that regulators will, will warm up to crypto? I do think they will. I think you're starting to see it. I mean, it's it's been a little bit slower than we would like. But five years ago, Bitcoin was in a in a uh, uncertain environment. Now you're seeing regulators moving past Bitcoin and starting to investigate other things and to try to understand them. I do believe over the long run, the U.S. will get there, and it's just about accelerating that. But the people want it. It's an asset class that, uh, particularly in a high inflation environment, is attractive. You've seen it being adopted and lots of practical use cases emerging. So I think crypto technology and the assets themselves are going to continue to be an important part of the economy. Lastly, Vlad, uh, Vlad um, Robinhood's sitting on a ton of cash, $4.7 billion. Any thought of, a, I guess, a potential dividend? Are you going to buy back stock with that? Well, uh, in the past, we have bought back stock. We bought back uh, about 7% of the outstanding in uh, Q3 of last year from Emergent Fidelity Technologies. We've also uh, enjoyed having the flexibility for opportunistic M&A, and we've been uh, very selective about uh, the companies that we look at and we end up moving forward with. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge strength for the company to have a fortress balance sheet in, uh, in all environments. Oh, fascinating quarter from uh, from you guys. We'll leave it there. Robin Hood, co-founder and CEO of Vlad Tenev. Uh, thanks for always making time for Yahoo Finance. We appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.